You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee, right here on LA Talk Radio. All right. Yeah. All right, Rifters, welcome to the show. We got a great show. Uh, Victor Pacheco is here, and uh, we have a great guest. Uh, he is my favorite villain in one of my favorite movies ever, Meteor Man. Uh, you've also seen him in House Party 3, and I'm going to get you a sucker. Uh, the great Roy uh, Fagan is here via Zoom. And uh, Roy, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a backstory on that intro, but we'll laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a backstory on it, but, uh, but yeah. What's up, buddy? It's all good, man. I'm happy. Uh, just landed, went and did an awesome charity for autism called Joshua's Gift, and it was a gift for me to be there and share something where you're giving as opposed to always taking as an actor producer writer always trying to grind and make things happen yeah uh, i was there still grinding but it was it was a blessing <laughs> you're you're also doing more gifting because i don't know if you know this but uh victor and i well i actually have it because i was diagnosed but i diagnosed victor uh you know we have autism too i think everyone is on a spectrum yeah some sort all, all kidding aside everyone is on some sort of spectrum but because i was always a, a really out of uh uh controlled child maybe my mom would say or uh disobedient uh i was on some kind of far out spectrum of fighting and being like crazy but somewhere in there i rechanneled that energy reset it to be more comedy and that's where the comedy kicked in it was a a survival technique that I had to do yeah. to not go to jail and not die. Yeah. That, that's how, that's how I, I mean, I, I never had the, the choices of going to jail and dying, but like I always used my autism for comedy for like uh, trying to make people laugh, you know? Mm. So that's, that's where I come into this world and Victor comes into this world because uh, it's kind of like gaydar. You know how like one gay guy could tell if another guy's gay? Since I no, uh, oh I yeah, like that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like I could tell Victor has autism, so it's like my autism art or I don't know. But yeah, so that that's hey, well, you know what's good about that? You know, for people that want to help that are listening, you know, Joshua's dot org. Go there and donate, and yeah. you know, have a heart, dig deep down. And if you don't have a heart, dig into your pocket. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna use that next time I do a charity show. I'm gonna be like, yeah. All right. I didn't. I didn't have a chance <laughs> to say that uh, last night. Uh, my time was shortened because of you know it's a fundraiser, so they're raising money. So I didn't get a chance to say that. But that was my whole plan to be able to share that with the audience. The audience got a little tired of you know a long affair with three hours, and and they asked me to the third hour to get up there and wake everybody up and i said oh i don't wake the dead not this time oh i like <laughs> that i don't wake the dead yeah. i mean come on you guys are coming you can't get up there after everyone's dead and think you bring your best energy your best jokes your best you know whatever and people don't receive it you know a gift is not a gift if you don't receive it did you know that no 100 wow. percent. yeah yeah so your best brilliant you know, bits or, or energy. It's all energy for me. Um, I write my bits on, you know, right, like right there. I was actually going to tell you guys to bring some music, uh, royalty free. And I was going to do some freestyle off the top of the dome. Oh my uh, God. That would be awesome. I think that way you and I can plan a little bit more. I can make sure royalty free beats or my son, will get us some beats and we'll have fun that way. But this time you want to freestyle with me, maybe on the outro, we'll have fun. That'd be cool. That was so, it. so uh i wanted to start with meteor man because okay. uh that's actually one of my favorite movies oh uh, wow yeah i think i think because one it's a superhero movie but it's actually a comedy yeah it is and, and i think that's why i really liked it you know what i mean like I, I like i got the jokes and all that stuff so i wanted to know when you were filming it like mm. when you read the script, did you get the vibe of that? Like, hey, this is a superhero movie, but it's a comedy. 
Yeah, back in the day, it's always funny for me. I didn't read scripts. I just read my part because that was the lead. Lend my ego into whatever else was happening other than Bill Cosby, um, Errol, you know, James Earl Jones, Marla Gibbs, um, Biz Markey, uh, Big Daddy Kane. You know, those people that were involved, Luke Vandross, those were the things that caught me, Robert Townsend directing it and writing it. That was like, wow. But the script, I don't remember like back in the day, which is a good actor thing yeah. to do is to read a script. But I didn't read the script. What I did was flick through because he wrote it for me. Oh, and then, nice. And, and then he didn't. He wrote it. And then he also had his first first choice. His supreme choice was, okay. that, was Denzel Washington. Oh, so you beat out Denzel. So that was the beauty. And he, he called me, but he didn't share it with me up front because he originally told me he wrote it for me. So I believe he did. I believe he, in my swag, my coolness, my voice, yeah. my temperance of whoever I am. And he did that. I believe that's what he said. But then he came to me later when I think Denzel couldn't do it because he was doing another film that had to do with the hair blonde thing or bleaching or whatever it was. And so RT, which is what I call him, my boy RT, my brother, um, came to me, called me and said, hey, I got good news and bad. And I was like, no, this is where shit goes down right here. The bad news is Denzel is not available. That's what he said. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. But <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, that was the essence. And the good news was uh, I got my part back that he wrote for me. Mm -hmm. And I was ecstatic because I was like, I think he even told me this years later, he made a, a documentary or a clip online like TikTok or Instagram and shared that with me. And he said again, you know, wow, not that you beat out Denzel, but you did far, you know, you surpassed. And this is RT's word, even what I envisioned. And he congratulated me on this part was not only written for you, but you owned it. Yeah. And and so knowing Mr. Washington is a fantastic creator. I can't call him an actor. He was beyond an actor. He is in the moment. He keeps it, if anything, as an acting coach and director myself, that's my first note. Keep it real. And, you know, being in the moment is is not easy, especially me being a comedian, because I'll, I'll take you out of the moment in a minute. I could be in church. My cousin and I have been at funerals where something was funny during the funeral. When something <laughs> is funny, even at a sad point, I realize that I'm not all there. I, I'm not all there. Something's yeah. missing here in my head. That comedy, humor, and this is maybe true or not. I didn't do extensive research, but they say the root word humor derives from hormones. Oh. That is a feel-good hormone, humor. And I, I, I'm a big stickler on when shit is bad and sad and negative. Yeah. I'm going to bring the energy in the room. And then people say, why are you so crazy? Why do you do it? And I realized over years after being a disturbed child and going through you know, my own spectrum uh, that I was making myself laugh. Yeah, that I had an anger issue, that I had problems, and I had to take a situation that is always something funny to me. And right now I'm being too serious, but usually I'm so, you know, crazy. People go, how do you stay so cool? But that's just the spectrum of being able to take your imagination and take something that was meant to be serious and make it funny. And it was like, is anything serious to you? And my answer is no. Yeah, I tried being serious once. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, genius. There you go. My last, my my uh, my uh, other question I had was, how do you keep your your cool during that situation? Well, you just answered it because I'm like you. Like I I I tell jokes at funerals. I think it's funny <laughs> because I I think it's good to uh, bring laughter about their life and like the good times. Like I don't want to hear that they're gone. You know what I mean? Well, they say you know, cry at birth and laugh at funerals. And, you know, basically I'm from the hood as I put my hoodie up. And <laughs> I just thought that'd be a nice tie in. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. and I, also, I also brought two pair of cool glasses just in case these weren't cool enough. So let's just see. Yeah. And I, I, I like a survey. Is that okay? We do a yeah, survey. We'll, we'll do a survey. Me and Victor. Okay. Will and these were conservative cool. Right. You see okay. the swag? You see I the do. swag? I see All the right. style. Yeah. You see me? All yeah. right. Now, also, you know, I had the hoodie on with the suit. Oh. And I had the whole look. And so I was kind of conservative Hollywood. Right. 
So I was that, you know, the crazy director, actor guy that, okay, that's how they introduced me. Crazy director, actor guy from Hollywood. And then I got these when I that were in the mail. So I said, wow, for your show, this is the first time these glasses have ever been seen. Oh, my you God. tell me now they got the little T on the side. I don't know what that is. That's but, uh, the T stands for terrifically awesome. Okay, let's start with that then. Now, uh -huh. survey says these or these right now. What what are we going with? I think the ones you're wearing right now, man. They look yeah. they look they look fly, and I don't know, like the other, uh, like this one's like super cool. The other ones look like a little bit more aggressive. Like you know what I mean? Like what you want, dude? What do you want? What do you want? Yeah, like you're trying to cut a deal. That's true because I see uh, record people, music people wear this type. Yeah, yeah. So uh, would these be more like my asshole glasses, possibly? Well, like uh, more like, like you know, I'm going to make this deal right now, whether you like okay. it or not. And I got the best plan I got. And if, okay. you, if you're not feeling it, then I'm just walking away because that ain't worth the business. But I okay, mean, I like that's that. how I see it. That's how no, I, I see like it. that. And then what, because I'm doing a lot of deals, guys. What yeah. if I wear these doing the deals? What would these say? That would be like more... Hey, you're from Meteor Man type film. <laughs> <laughs> I was so stoked to be a part of a classic movie that I didn't know would be classic later. We know Five Heartbeats was classic. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But I kept my cool Meteor Man glasses for three to five years and I couldn't take them. And it was embarrassing because I just kept living the dream of wow you know i got a couple of items from the show from the movie and those glasses i could never take them off and i became a hat man i'm really into hats but i decided to swag it out with the hair dude today oh, but uh, uh promise to you guys the next interview we do and i don't see a lot of part twos with you know after looking at your catalog so yeah. obviously you don't do a lot of part twos because that would say more about me when you do I, a part two with me i do part twos if they liked me and i liked them so okay, so I do. So there will definitely be a part two. I can't. No, we're halfway. Part three. We're halfway. <laughs> we're halfway there because I'm still thinking. If I can like you, it's still some things. <laughs> some things. I like my man. He's cool. <laughs> oh, he's fucking great. All right, we'll do the podcast without Keith next time. Okay? Yeah, I think we fine, might. Fine. We'll do we'll it. Bring Let's him go. in. Um, but no, Keith is cool because Keith, you know. Like I said, there were some things in life that threw a curve uh, ball to me that I was like, whoa, where did that come from? And Keith was hitting me up with tech, you know, emails and being professional doing the writer's strike and the actor's strike. You know, I think he was like, well, he's not going to do it during that time. And true, I was honoring every and anything they were asking us to do. But he was really worried that, you know, I wasn't interested yeah. because I don't I don't do a lot of these. Yeah, and I believe if you do too many of these with the wrong people, you link you 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 leave the wrong possible legacy. What the hell were you talking about? And why are you doing that with these turkeys? And you're a turkey, so I wanted to make sure that I really enjoyed what you do. And I heard the and I heard the the camaraderie, and I heard the corniness. I mean the 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 the, the, the fun that you guys have. And I was like, no, they're right in my alley. And any comic that understands what it's like to be an actor or a comedian or a comedic actor. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole guys. That's a whole that's a whole different ball game. Quick story of getting auditions in the comedy. When you walk in the room, you have to read the script and the writers write it and you read the line. But they're saying, hold on. And they're saying, oh, we have a call. And the casting director is ready. And the director is sometimes there, not in TV as much. Right. Um, and the producers are the producer writers. So sometimes, you know, so it took me years that the producers were the writers. Yeah, because they, they, they have the money. They have the, the say. Right? They have the say. They don't have the money. They're oh, yeah. hired by the network. They're hired by the network. But they have the, the energy in the room that if you're not delivering their jokes that they worked right, then they're not into you. So it took me years to learn. Make them laugh first with your own personality. Oh. So God, I would start walking in the door with some bullshit. Uh. <laughs> I start walking in the door with their one line, and I just say, "Mary had," a and they'd be like, <laughs> "No, there would be a beat. There would be a beat because no one has ever done that." Uh. But uh. it rings to them, "Hey, I wrote that," and then they would laugh. So once people laugh, what did you do? You cut the tension. Yeah. Because it's stress. They want to, you know, they yeah. got 10 other categories to cast. And soon as, and you guys got to know this, a comedian usually fails when the audience is not with them. 
if the audience is with you, you can almost say any damn thing. Oh, for sure. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Right? For right? Sure. Dude, we got yeah. stories, Roy. We got stories, yeah. for sure. We'll talk on that part, too. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll both exchange. But that was part of me learning, uh, meeting with Rob. Robert and I met on a commercial audition for, I believe, Taco Bell on my birthday. Oh. Trivial information. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, like, like, I was going to ask so, you, when's your birthday? 127, uh, <laughs> 61. It makes me 62 years old. I was, was going to say per- 77. Oh, okay. That's you? Uh, yeah, make you... Yeah, 77. Hey. Oh, weird. I like that. I see where you were going there. <laughs> eh. No. Anyway. <laughs> but Keith wasn't born in 77. I think he was born in like 86 or 80. Yeah, no, Keith, that would make yeah. Keith too old. You don't look that yeah. old, Keith. But anyway, <laughs> on the audition, um, I was eager, gung ho, guys. I was a little desperate. And so Robert was just coming from Chicago, doing his thing, here to make his movie and his moves. And he had just met me, and we were matched up on the audition. And I think right before we went in, or maybe I didn't, right on camera, they said your name. And I said my name. And he said his name, or he said his name, and then I said my name. And they pretended that that was information they wanted to hear because they were being nice. And Robert was looking at me because I'm doing what we're doing, having fun. And he was looking at me like, this guy is crazy like me, in a sense, because Robert's Aquarius. I'm Aquarius. I don't believe in all of that kind of stuff. It's just the ironic vibe of that's the month he was born as well. Right. And we were vibing. We did a great audition. And I just knew one of us or both of us were going to book it together. Oh, that's awesome. And so on the audition, I said, yeah, today is my birthday. I remember now. And I was all like, yeah. Then they went over to Robert. He said, hey, I'm Robert Townsend, and today is my birthday, too. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I'm Robert Townsend, and today is my birthday, too. (laughs) That's my impression of Robert. (laughs) I'm Robert Townsend, and today is my birthday, too. (laughs) And he looked at me, and I was like, yo, man, you kidding (laughs) me. So that was always, you know, kind of like energy. That's just, yeah. just energy, right? You get a so vibe you, with those people where you're like. Now we walk to the door and the casting door, door closes. <clears throat> I said, man, that's crazy. It's your birthday, too. He said, it's not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I said, dude, you're improv 101, baby. We did it. And yeah. he says, but he says. I just got to town a month and a half, two months. I'm here to take the town, man. You are great. You are funny. You are quick. I want to work with you. I got a movie I'd love for you to be a part of. And that was our initial connection. Oh, wow. That That's movie awesome. was that movie was Hollywood Show. Uh, and then it then went to, like, you did a couple more movies with him. Then it went to Meteor Man. Yeah, it went from Hollywood Show, The Five Heart Beats, Meteor Man, I believe. Yeah, and uh, I do have two more questions about Meteor Man, then we'll get off the, the Meteor Man. So. No, you had a two-question limit. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. No, go on. no you could. Cool. Okay. Is this is, oh, rumor is uh, yeah. that, that uh, there was an extra scene that I don't know if it was shot or if it was in the script where you go up to Meteor Man and you say, hey, Meteor Man, come join us. And let's take over the world together. Like, is that true or is that just a rumor? I heard it on the on the net, and I wanted to talk to you to see if that was true. I never heard of that. Oh, okay, cool. So it was a false rumor. Doesn't mean it's false. It just means I never heard of it. Come on, oh, read, okay. read my lips. I. <laughs> oh, okay. You I didn't say it wasn't true. It probably was true. When you write a, you put all kind of creative things in it. One of the most creative people that I can attest to would be my friend RT Robert Townsend. He's super creative. He could have had that, and he probably told me a lot of some things, but I don't remember that. But that would be uh, probably set up for a sequel. Yeah. Robert and I talked about a sequel a few years. We talked about a series, a sequel, and some other ideas. I'm gonna leave it at that because it was just talk but wouldn't that be cool wouldn't it would that be, be awesome wouldn't that be a ni- nice twist the yeah. greatest reboot of all time that but like honestly that that would be great wouldn't it be great it would but be then, fantastic but then the twist is like any good he is just tricking me to get information and then he goes back to yeah. destroy me to destroy me he's really let's join and he joins but he betrays me just to get and find my weakness which is not kryptonite 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was your favorite uh, Golden Lord? Was it Goldilocks or Larry? Come for Larry? Yeah. Like Larry was a kid. He got. Yeah, Larry was awesome. Another story was I don't remember doing that VO, you know, being an actor who prides himself on doing everything. Most. I think Townsend did that on me and my good friend Michael Dobo from you know, New York, uh, critical guy, cynical. Yeah. If I ever learned the word and opened the dictionary, Michael Doble's name and face would be there as cynical. He's very cynical. And when he saw the movie, he brought to my attention, who the F is that doing that voice? That's not you. And it was, get him, come fool, Larry. Get him, Larry. Get him, come. And that was supposed to be me. And I was like, damn, Robert, you produced it, directed, wrote it, and you did my voiceovers? So... I never talked to Robert about that, but I knew I didn't do that. I think that was Townsend doing my voice. I think there's always something as a creator you want to add to it. You know, in looping, when you do a movie, you go in and you loop stuff that didn't happen on the set to sweeten yeah. it. But no, nah, I wasn't with that when I heard that. Every time I hear or do something, I want it to come from me because, you know, keeping it real. Right. Uh, he just probably did that on a creative thing. But I was like, damn, I wish I could have looped some of his shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then my last meteor man question is uh how long did it take you to rehearse and film the fight scene because that was like because that was a fight scene that it, it also had jokes in the fighting you know what i mean yeah, yeah. That's so it, it was like a dance type of thing it was not a lot of rehearsal uh i was also a boxer fighter street guy you know told you I had a lot of issues growing up fighting in school and fighting in the streets and, um, you know, back then there was Billy Jack, a slip jointed or double my leg across your head like Holy, that. Whoa, whoa. And you, whoa. And you could be, you could be six feet tall. Yeah. I could, I could still do it today at 62. Literally. Oh my God. Jeez. Yeah. Literally. So I'm still, you know, I'm still that good, <laughs> but, but I don't have the, the core, the strength. You catch my leg, you can probably swing me. So I won't. Try. <laughs> you, you, can you imagine that? Yeah. So I wouldn't do that, but I still very limber. Uh, at one point, they called it double jointed. But when we rehearse, me coming from the hood in the streets and being a fighter, I was influenced by Muhammad Ali and I was influenced by um, Billy Jack, if you remember that movie. Yeah. And I was influenced by just people in the streets that were great fighters. And so when we started the fight scene, there was a limited amount of rehearsal with the sticks because that was something you had to, we had a stunt coordinator, Jeff. Uh, at 62, my mind amazes me that I actually remember everyone's name. Yeah. And Jeff, Jeff with me and Robert with the sticks, we hit here, hit here, pop. Yeah. And you remember the sounds? Yeah. Yeah. And that, and part of those sounds are to help you remember what you're doing. And it's also warning the actor you're coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And all that stuff. And you try to do it fast. However, I'm also shut. None of this is in the script. None of this is with Robert because he's directing and, you know, acting. So as I'm doing my punches and they call it Southpaw, I'm left-handed. You never know what's come from. None of that's rehearsed. That's all me, Street Fighter. I think I was so convincing being a menace to society growing up. Right. When I get into anger, I'm in it. Yeah. Because acting is reacting and keeping it real is keeping it real. Of a couple other things, I cut, you know, to the side and I said, hey, can I ask you a question? How come you're not directing me? Wow. How come you're directing Bill Cosby and James Earl Jones? And I'm the lead, I thought, with you, the co-lead. And I needed your support a little bit. And he looked at me and said, I think, if I can recall this right, he said, I don't need to give you direction. You're doing everything you should be and more. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Egotistical actor, chop down. Yeah. Because you're uh thinking... You know, you get greedy. Actors are needy and greedy. And it wasn't about attention I was seeking. It was about, you know, as a lead, I was like, I want to make sure I was doing the right thing. And he was, like, busy with his stars. Yeah. And I was, like, one of the leads, but not like a James Earl Jones or Marla Gibbs and Big Daddy Kane. I was a fresh star that was coming up. 
And yeah. he was like, just keep doing what you do. I don't need to bother you. But I, I had that needy feel of, I think I pulled him to the side. So we probably would have, if we, we went over budget because we kept pulling each other to you know the side. And they were like, someone needs to get sick. They keep talking. <laughs> You're like $10 million over budget and all these sidebars. <laughs> oh my god but do you think also that like that that shows you the trust he had in you because you you've worked oh with him god. before so yes. like so like maybe that trust built it in every project and then when you were in that moment you know it's like a moment he's like hey man i've worked with you three or four times i know what you're doing i don't need to direct you i trust i, I, I think it was that yes sir but i think it was more of he created in his mind people say the role from who i am not only a trust but he had denzel in mind with the cool the guy he created the role around the yeah. the villain i mean i've been cast a lot as the villain the tough guy the voice is part of being a villain the control the way you hold your hand the way you look at somebody the shadows on your face is all a part of he saw me as that guy and I, I, maybe I need reassurance at that time to just go, hey, Robert. And remember when you meet a guy on a Taco Bell commercial audition, a lot of times you don't, as an actor, give that respect that that's my director. But I've always been able to be being a renaissance man, that if I'm on your set as an actor, I'm not a writer, I'm not a director, I'm not the guy. I'm just the vehicle that you're going to work with and tell me what to do. When you say cut, I stop. When you say action, I start. I am the actor. Yeah. I color in the words and I bring it to life. You're in control of this. I'm not. So I've learned to remove my big ego away. And it takes a smart actor to remove his big ego. Even a little ego could be detrimental on a oh. set. Oh, definitely, definitely. I wish I was a smart actor, man, because I didn't know that. Well, you are now because my course that you'll be taking is only nine ninety nine, <laughs> and and so anyone listening can you know sign up. We'll give them more right down here. See, acting one hundred and one. So basically, I teach as I go. I really do. I, I pass on the gift. You know, if acting is reacting. What is what is what is the problem when people don't understand that listening is the key? And that's what that's what this is all about, learning how to react to someone and not, you know, someone says, I would, I remember a casting director or someone said to me, can we do that again? I said, sure. Because I would never expect that reaction. Right. And I was like, what do you mean? You wouldn't react like that. Yeah. And, I, you know, you never challenge anyone, especially the director, unless you're making a powerful point that director goes, ah, never saw that. Run with it. And that's what, you know, Robert allowed me to do is to run with the character. But with a casting director, not always, but maybe not today. But in the old days, at some point, you ran across a few casting directors that didn't know shit. Right. But they had the job. It's kind of like comedy, too. Huh? It's kind of like comedy, too. <laughs> right. When an actor's vision is bigger than the director's, you were pretty much in trouble. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Well, Vic Victor, you got you got a question for Roy? I got a bunch of questions, but we're going to be here for five hours. But uh, what's it so called? Pick yeah, your um, best one. Okay, so um, in the sh um, so you did a lot of spots on television. Um, I did. From Martin, Jamie Foxx, show Married with Children, Mad About You, Will and Grace, Hanging with Mr. Cooper. There's like a bunch. And so I was wondering, um, is there a sitcom that you did a spot with and enjoyed more than the other ones? Like one that just stands out where you're like, man, that was that was the gym. Two of the big ones. Because I've been knowing Martin years before the show, and he was, you know, really stressed out with just the schedule of working a TV series. I really understand that until later. But you know, Bentley Evans and Martin were friends of mine. But again, back in the day, I hadn't really had a lot of luck getting African-American shows because of my strange look, green eyes, uh, sandy blonde hair, light skin. Um, the black people knew we come in different shades, but unfortunately, a lot of the black shows in the old days 
were produced and created by what there were any times that I was able to start succeeding was when black people, Bentley Evans and Martin became executive producers and creators of their own shows, Jimmy Fox as well. And I was able to walk in there and do my thing again, back to RT and all the people like him, they received my craziness. Hey y'all, I walked in saying crazy shit. I walked in with the character. I came in with wardrobe. I came in with accents. I was also very theatrical and over the top. It was hard for me to get work because basically I thought, I, you know, I thought it was supposed to be a theatrical audition. I think my agent or something. I was too big. I was too broad. Right. And one of the cool things about getting Jamie Foxx was, if you remember, it was a broad character. Yeah. You know, he, he was, he was this, this funny guy. And then on Martin, he was James Earl, uh, Holmes. James Earl Holmes, you remember, like the Shakespeare, only they put Holmes, like homie. Or maybe it was James Earl, uh, James Earl homie, I'm not sure. But whatever, these characters were broad. And I remember the actors being really nice and being cool. And I remember, wow, I'm working with my folks. I'm working with my people. I'm on an African-American show, an all-black cat, different from being on... Um, not so much married with children. I don't have my resume. I don't remember everything. What else is there? I think there was some other, uh, there was uh, another show, M Murphy Brown, I think I did. Oh, uh, yeah. Murphy Brown, Touched by an Angel, The Cherokee Kid, Mad About You, The Jamie Foxx, okay. Holy you. Lord. Mad about you. <laughs> I'm auctioneering it off right here. <laughs> but, but, but Mad About You and, you know, stuff like that. Murphy Brown, that's the point. When you're doing a Martin and a Jamie Foxx, these are two different sets. Yeah, that's a different spectrum that Roy, you know, when he brings that energy, it's a little bit more controlled on the white shows, because if you're too black, you don't come back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make that up or is that like something? Make that it up. Said? Make, I'll tell you, I'm up the dome, baby. Yeah, no, that, that's brilliant. I've never. Well, heard why do you have to make that up when that's true? That's it's not, not about, okay, that's sorry, real sorry, shit. Did, did you originate that? I'm sorry. That I came just from, did. But I okay, no, that's beautiful. I didn't okay. originate. I didn't originate the pain behind it. That's real shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, yeah, uh, questioning real, that. Baby. No. 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 Because it sounded so poetically poignant. I, I know. I'm just like, wait a minute. Like, Hold up a second. You're talking about all this. Like, if you're too black, you don't come back. It's true. Like what, it's true. No. No. I mean, it's just. It's. I'm just like, whoa. Is this what other black actors say to one? Of another? course. This is what we have to go through. And so, me being at that point. <laughs> me being that guy like i said when i come on an audition and it's a black casting director and it's a you know black producers black writers i come in with my flavor and they can feel it they can they can receive it now you come in with too much flavor and you ruin you know the taste the stew is because you know unfortunately a spectrum of at one point there are codes that they have to hire a minority at one point and when you are that minority a lot of times on some of those white shows they were hiring me because i was light skin yeah and i cleaned up well when i put a suit on i became very articulate and i became just clean enough for them to feel safe to hire me that i wasn't going to rob them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Roy, if I ever get a sitcom, I, I want you to be like a star on it. You sure about that? Because so many yeah. people have said that shit, and no. I've seen them get the sitcom, and they don't call me. So I got it on tape this time. We you, got it. You, got, you got it on this. Yeah. Because, we'll see. Uh, we'll see about that, uh, man. I think yeah. this would be so good. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll yeah. see about that. Man. Keith ain't no bullshitter, though. I, I will put that out there. Keith okay. ain't no bullshitter. So no, I feel the part. You know, after interviewing a lot of different people, you kind of find out who you mesh with and yeah. the vibes. And I will be honest, the vibes are good here. And if you did get a sick, my lawyer will contact you so we can write the paperwork up. I'm calling you. I'm going to be like, Roy, you're it. It's going to be okay. The but again, when my lawyer calls you, it's like, I'm going to be asking for certain things that you might be like, Damn, Roy, we didn't agree to all this. You have to be EP. You have to be one of the writers. Yep, I want to be a partner with you. I don't want to be no one. Right. At 62, I'm not doing puppetry anymore. That's fine, as long as I get you to sign my Meteor Man DVD. Hold on, I want to take this call. I thought this would be fun. If anyone ever called me, I was going to answer. Hi, uh, Roy? Yes, this is Roy. Roy, this is Oscar with Chairmax. Um, I got a delivery for Kathleen... 
Mary? Oh, my my mom's wheelchair, 97-year-old Sweetie Pie. Are you here? Yes. All right, so I'm going to have my electrician open the door for you because I'm doing a podcast, but I always said if I was ever on a podcast, it would be great if a bill collector called and I could just be totally embarrassed, but unfortunately it didn't go down that way. <laughs> uh, I think I met you last time. Uh, he'll come open it and thank you again. I'm going to finish my podcast. Thanks, brother. All right, brother. Thank you very much. All right, okay. bye. Yeah. So that was supposed to go. That was my plan. Wouldn't that be cool? That would have been hilarious. No, I get all kind of, I get all kind of AI crazy calls. You, we all get those, you know, crazy calls. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times, you know, I just like my best comedy comes out of like when I'm talking to them because you're free. You can't be mad. You know, it's all about good vibrations when someone is doing something wrong. It's finished. Oh, you finished that? Oh, we start on that, my brother. What on this light? You know we live on TV and shit, right? Yeah, start on that, bro. It's right there. Oh, I love you, man. Love you. Hey, that's my guy. That's Liam. Uh, you were saying uh, about doing my sitcom and you, how you want all. And I was like, that's fine as long as you sign my Meteor Man DVD. And then you're like, hold on. I got a telephone call. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, no, I'll pick- sign that DVD. I'll sign oh. that DVD. <laughs> And I think off, you know, like when we get off this a few weeks, we all three should get together and think about what would be a cool premise for us to put something together. I don't know if you have something already. Yeah. Uh, let's not talk about it on this, but if you do, I think, you know, looking at you, you're funny looking. All right. <laughs> yeah. You are. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you yeah. Are. yeah. You're in my Hall of Fame, man, because any guest that makes fun of Keith is like, has a, well, has a, has a well, great place I'm saying that out of a network <laughs> point of view that, first of all, you have to be funny looking if you're doing comedy. Right. And then second, you might be funny. Doesn't mean you have to be because they're going to bring in writers to make you funny. But if we're already the writers and we hire top writers that make us all funny, funnier, Right. Then pretty much let's own our own destiny, tell our own narratives, and not other than the network owning the show. If we make it a movie first, for all the people out there that don't know this, if you make it a movie first, you can at least own it. Yeah. If it's a network show, they own wow. it. So maybe we make a short, maybe we start putting some stuff on TikTok or YouTube, then we make a short and then we own it. Yeah. And then we pitch it to the networks. It's ours now. Yeah. Proof of concept, right? Exactly. But when you write and they bring in this and they put up the money, next thing you know, you know, when it's domestic and foreign, you know, whatever, you don't get those big checks. You you get actor checks, not producer checks. So let's own it. What's up, you know? Oh, no, it's the other one. It's the white one. It's the white one. It's two of them. <laughs> now, now, Roy, I have one more question, but I do have a quick story since you brought this up. I wanted to run it by you. Right. So I was doing stand-up this weekend. Mm-hmm. This, this comic had a joke about, like, uh, you know, how to get away with murder and stuff. You got to go to Home Depot, buy a shovel, and buy lime and stuff. And he didn't know how to finish the joke. Mm. And I, I said, oh, a good way to finish this joke is... After you say lime, you say, I didn't know I had to stop by the produce store. <laughs> Keith, I'm not laughing at that being funny. I'm laughing at how awkward it is. <laughs> and that shit went over my head. <laughs> Keith, explain the joke, please. Okay. When you explain <laughs> some shit after you've made it funny, it's already a bust. It's already, right. a, it's already a bust. That's but true. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's take okay. it. Let's it's, back me. Up. it's me. It's me. Okay. It's me. It's not you. Yeah, it's yeah. you. It's yeah. me. No, no. But let, I'll tell it one more time. But you're right. If you have to repeat, it's not funny. So yeah, you... he says uh, how to get away with murder and get rid of the body. I have to go to Home Depot, buy a shovel, and buy a line. And I said, well, you should say at the end of the joke, I didn't know uh, I had to get produce for this. I had to go to the produce, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. No. Lime and lime. Okay. No. Hell no. <laughs> Hell to the no, no. Okay. Already, already, this is where you effed up. Right now, you have fudged this whole thing up because I was thinking about on your show, 
allowing you to be one of the writers. I don't want you on anything to do with writing. <laughs> no, no, no. You can star on it, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll reoccur on it, but you will not be in the writer's room, dog. <laughs> you have just almost, we almost got out alive. No, no, no. I, I was, I was just testing because I don't want to hire him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, I can't, yeah. I can't. You know, I can't. don't do that ever again, okay? No, we're not hiring that guy. Trust no, me. No. He's out. And, and don't He's... try out anyone's material on my time. Ever. No, no, no. I was just asking you if you think that yeah. would be yeah, you're you no, don't, right. don't ask me and don't 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 do that. No, we're, we're no, we're we're, we're throwing that. Out, yeah. Come on, man. I think Come on. I think we're closer to being a team an hour ago and now we're moving. <laughs> And then my last question for you is if you could go into a time machine and talk to a younger version of yourself, what would you say? I am a child of God. Uh, I'm probably one that has a bit of a filthy mouth being a comic. So my pastor Jerome allows me to make uh, a couple of jokes here and there, but I try to keep it clean. I don't do clean comedy. I do comedy, right. but again, I'm more of a, a, a believer that wants to inspire anybody young and I want to inspire artists. I want to inspire anyone with a dream. I want to inspire you guys because you guys are white and you're still trying to find yourselves. Thank you. <laughs> you know, that's it with you. Uh, uh, I definitely, hey, from this podcast, it's like, what did you get? Uh, Roy, where can the folks at home uh, follow and support you at? <laughs> you can follow and support me on IG, Roy B. Fagan, or TikTok, Roy B. Fagan. Or you can deposit some money into my mortgage account. You can find that online if you're trying to invest in me. I don't do the cash app. But pretty much, um, I'm creating a series of TV shows. I have my own company. I'm not going to throw the name out. Uh, part two of our podcast, we'll bring that and talk more about my new film and TV company. And oh, hopefully, by yeah. and, uh, <laughs> yes. add that to the production, uh, what I have to slate for 2024. That'd be awesome. All right, Roy. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. I, I, yep. I'm so glad you're my new best friend. You are. And, and uh, it's going to be awesome, man. I can't wait to work with you. I mean, I am. I said you are. You are your new best friend. Oh. I am my new best friend. Oh, right, right, yeah. No, but that's true. That's true. That's one of the things that we all need to do in concluding this, this awesome outro. That we have to find out who we really are. And we have to love ourselves first. How can yeah. you have fun? I'll tell the lime guy that. That lime joke sucked. <laughs> that lime joke sucked. That joke sucked. That I, I lost faith. I, I lost faith in you as a human being. <laughs> After we're gonna, that, we're gonna have to do a part two. Part two is just gonna be roasted Keith and his shit. After, After that joke, bro, I was really like. This is some corny shit. Why did I do this interview? I feel really bad for you, but mostly I was figuring out how do we actually cut that part out, but it's 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 done. All right, guys. Oh my god, I'm gonna get uh, kicked out, man. Oh my god, uh, I'm laughing too loud. Roy, thank you so much. I appreciate it, buddy. I appreciate you guys. That's crazy. Right. Blessing. Peace. All right. Oh my god. Okay, that was the interview with uh I can't, stop. I can't stop. I know we're recording. I can't stop. Victor's <laughs> having a heart attack. <laughs> Dude, that guy was great. I uh, love Roy. Roy was awesome, man. Uh, that was oh god, that was that was incredible. All Thanks right. for having me on, man. That was that was awesome, man. That was our interview with Roy Fagan, guys. And uh <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Subscribe, Ray Reveal. Yeah. Back in the day, I used to live in a shack That's alright, nigga, I'll be right back Look at you, nigga, cap, cap, cap Looking like, nigga, now you got that hat Look at you, look at me, look at them Everybody know they call that nigga him Him, him, him I'm on the microphone every day 
Look at you, look at me anyway Once upon a time I lived in a house Everybody know my name is a mouse Everybody know I lived in a mouse And that nigga is in my house Rat Once by the time I lived in a house and everybody knew that I was a mouse Yeah, that nigga is a louse Yeah, that nigga's a louse You don't know, you gotta hit today If you don't know, get on your way Shakalaka waka Shakalaka boom Shakalaka waka Shakalaka boom Shakalaka waka Shakalaka boom Shakalaka waka Shakalaka boom